Well, brace yourself for another blast of cold, cold winter weather. What you can do to make sure that you stay healthy and your car continues to run. These promises simply don't align with his actions. He's still banned, but a decision is made to allow Patrick Hickey to be part of the Washington Local School Board and attend meetings. And fast food fury, two big announcements from two of the country's biggest chains. This is 13 ABC Action News with Diane Larson and Lee Conklin. Well, a slight break today, if you can call temperatures in the teens a break. That's right, but more brutal cold. The worst of it is on the way. Let's take a live look outside right now. No snow. Temperatures soon to tumble, however. A lot of schools delaying or canceling for tomorrow. We do have a list scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And if you're heading east of here toward Cleveland tonight or tomorrow, there is a good possibility of lake effect snow along the I-90 corridor, and, corridor, that is. And far from the only place uh, bracing for snow and cold. And you can add hurricane force winds to the mix, too. Yeah, we're talking about the east coast, a system barreling up the east coast, bringing with it the threat of severe weather from the Carolinas to New England. It's already causing dozens of crashes in South Carolina. Now, closer to home, the major health concerns during this Arctic blast, hypothermia and frostbite. Checked in with Mercy and ProMedica today. We're told there's been one mild hypothermia case at Mercy St. Charles, and since Christmas, ProMedica Toledo Hospital has seen two cases of frostbite. All right, dangerous weather here, the cold, snow to the east. When can we finally expect that break? 13 minutes of nonstop news continues now with Chief Meteorologist Jay Bershback. Jay. And the quick answer, Sunday and Monday with temperatures at or above 30. And that'll be the warmest it's been here in a few weeks. So really, it's going to feel even warmer than that. And right now, thanks to the cloud cover, Still not that bad out there. Temperature is holding steady at 16 in Toledo. And look at the change from last night at this time. Ben Cathy was right here. 14 degrees warmer than it was last night. But things will be changing. Skies are expected to clear out. Clouds peel away. And our current wind chills above zero will start to fall off. And because of that, a wind chill advisory in effect for areas east of I-75 through Saturday. West of I-75, they go through tomorrow afternoon. Now, tomorrow's forecast, your 13-hour forecast, Arctic blast, definitely. When you wake up here with that little window of clearing, temperatures near or just below zero, only rising to 7. We are in the teens today, 7 tomorrow. When you factor in a gusty wind, wind chills throughout the day, pretty much averaging between 10 and 15 below zero. That's cold. Gets even colder Friday. That's cold. It gets even colder Saturday before it starts to warm up. More on that and the chances for snow when I come back. Well, during these dangerously cold conditions, concerns of frozen water pipes and meters can arise. City of Toledo urging you to take the steps to avoid the problems. City leaders say it's really important to keep that slow, steady stream flowing through the faucets, a slow drip. Make sure warm air is able to circulate around your meter. If the meter's in an outdoor pit, check that the cover fits properly and there are no cracks where cold air can blow in. Anyone who suspects damage or has a water emergency is urged to contact Engage Toledo. And this Arctic air also creates problems for your car. From flat tires to dead batteries, sub-freezing or sub-zero temperatures can impact the way the car runs. 13 ABC's Michael Bratton showing us the biggest issues mechanics are seeing during this deep, deep freeze. Ask any repair shop how business has been in these frigid temps and you'll likely get the same answer. It's been steady. We've been non-stop in here. It's been bumping. Um, gas, gas, everybody's coming in for gas. Everybody's coming in for free air. We've been filling a lot of tires. At this battery wholesale, workers are busy swapping dead batteries claimed by the cold for fresh ones. Cold weather is not good on batteries. <laughs> We're almost running out of stock on a lot of items here. Managers here say they've seen a lot of dead, frozen, and bloated batteries over the past week. If it's turning over hard, you probably need to get it checked out quickly because it's only going to get worse throughout the winter. Batteries aren't the only issue maintenance shops are seeing in the area. They're saying underinflated tires are causing problems for drivers too. Mechanics at Newman's Marathon in Bowling Green say it's good to keep your tires inflated to at least 32 PSI in freezing temps. When it gets cold, your tires are going to drop in pressure. So it's, it's, it's a good thing to keep it up, up to where it needs to be. Workers here also recommend getting your car thoroughly checked over so you don't end up on the side of the road. Check the maintenance on it. Make sure everything's good for your car. You, you know, all the fluid levels are good and, um, you know, Make sure everything's working for you. 
You know, don't want to get stuck out there in the cold. With Arctic air here through the weekend, mechanics like these expect to keep busy through it all. In Bowling Green, Michael Bratton, 13 ABC Action News. The Wood County Dog Shelter is searching for a family for a dog that was left out in the cold. And this is Whiskers. According to the shelter, he was found by North Baltimore Police. The shelter can't locate his owner, but since he has a license, he won't be able to be adopted for another 11 days. Right now, just skin bones and only 43 pounds, but they tell us he's making a strong recovery. More cold weather coverage is ahead. Mm. Emotions running high tonight as the Washington local school board attempted to come up with a solution to a ban against Patrick Hickey. Hickey was sworn in as a new board member earlier today, but still isn't allowed on district property. 13 ABC's Amy Montgomery on the story once again, just back from the meeting to explain whether the board has made a call on this. Amy? Lee, they have. Basically, every meeting from now through April will be held off of district property so that Hickey can attend. The board president says this is not a permanent solution by any means, but it's progress. Patrick Hickey's seat sat empty, and it will stay that way as long as it's in this building or on any other Washington local property. 3,000 some odd people in this district voted for him, for Patrick Hickey, and therefore he has a right to the seat that he has obtained by a proper vote of the people. After some conversations in executive session, a proposal was eventually passed by the board on Wednesday that would allow him to do that. But now, every board meeting through April will be held somewhere else, off campus. The ban is still in effect. Hopefully this will be a compromise that everybody can not necessarily agree with, but can live with. But during the three-hour board meeting, it was clear it was not the outcome that most in the room wanted. From parents... If you lift the ban and something goes wrong, it is on you. To graduates... Patrick Hickey has chosen, by running for board, to reopen the wounds that he inflicted beginning two years ago. Former board members. He resigned to heal the district. When is it going to happen? And even current ones. Don't let this man destroy this district. He is not here to heal. Spoke out against the former superintendent. During a Facebook Live of his swearing in, off property and by a notary public, Hickey addressed these concerns, saying in 30 years he never violated a policy here or anywhere. We need to listen to the 3,300 voters and not hysteria and not unfounded uh, allegations, and we need to let the people speak. And while this is by no means a permanent solution, the board hopes it's a step in the right direction. But even Ilstrup admits they'll just have to wait and see. I think it's a temporary solution to see how we can work through this. Now, Hickey will be at the next board meeting. The district will also have to pay to rent some, if not all, of the spaces for these upcoming, upcoming meetings, that is. A location has yet to be decide, decided. Reporting live, Amy Montgomery, 13 ABC, Action News. Toledo police now say the death of a baby boy is a case of murder. The suspect, 30-year-old Eric Mathis, who you see here, police say he was caring for 11-month-old Nehemiah Wright and left the baby unsupervised in the bathtub. Officers report finding the boy unresponsive and he later died. Detectives added the murder charge today after receiving results of the autopsy that showed the baby boy died from blunt force trauma. A man sentenced more than a year ago for a deadly drunk driving crash is finally going to begin his prison term. An appeals court last week ruled that Toledo police did act properly when they took a blood sample from Corey Spielman when he was unconscious. So a judge today ordered Spielman to start serving the original five-year sentence. In 2015, Spielman was riding his motorcycle while drunk and crashed into a car on I-75. 19-year-old Marissa Presnell was killed. While Spielman was sentenced in 2016, he was allowed to remain free while he appealed. State troopers in Fulton County make a major drug bust, seizing hundreds of thousands of dollars in pot. On New Year's Eve, troopers pulled over a Ford Expedition with California plates. With the help of Washington Police uh, K-9 Pharaoh, they found 70 pounds of marijuana with a street value of approximately $318,000. Troopers arrested this man, 25-year-old Joseph Evans. He's now being held at CCNO and charged with possession of pot. If convicted, he could face up to eight years in prison and up to a $15,000 fine.
Toledo's new mayor marking his first full day in office, joining the community in remembering longtime radio host Harvey Steele. Steele, half of K100's morning show, Chores and Steele, died last week from complications of diabetes. Today, the first official act as mayor for Wade Kapsikavich was to sign a proclamation honoring the contribution Steele made to Northwest Ohio. Who not only was a you know, a wonderful personality and someone that Toledoans came to associate almost as a friend, um, but a real advocate for uh, organ donation, um, actually recognized and honored for the work uh, he did in that field. And Harvey Steele was 60 years old. New at 11, here's a look ahead of what's in tomorrow's editions of The Blade. A former state representative and county commissioner now running for the Ohio Senate says Ohio should create a fund to help primarily rural counties fill budget gaps created by lower state, lower state aid, and stagnant tax, tax bases. And Fiat Chrysler's vehicle sales dropped by 8% last year, including a 1% dip in the Jeep Wrangler. However, the drop is consistent with the industry trend affecting other automakers as well. That after a seven-year boom. Read more about these and other stories in tomorrow's edition of The Blade and on the web at ToledoBlade.com. If you're looking for something to do with the kids, Toledo Zoo offering half-priced admission. You can cash in on the deal by printing off a coupon posted on the zoo's website or showing it on your phone at the gate. Half-price deal runs through March 2nd. You can find a link to the coupon and their website on ours, 13abc.com. Still much more head-on action news tonight. Bannon, a book and a war of words between the former trusted Trump strategist and the president. Fast food fight, industry giants battle, but the consumer could be the real winner. And a little bit later, bust a move. It's the case <laughs> of the local dad, the dancing dad gone viral. <laughs> Those stories plus Jay tracks the <laughs> coldest part of this extended deep freeze. We're back in 35 seconds.